call the meeting together at, to, to order at 6.01. We're late. Um, review and approve the minutes from November 15th, 2022. Any comments, changes? If not, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Um, November 15th. Yeah, November 15th. And a second? I was not at that meeting, but I think I that's okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. It's okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. And quickly to financial statements. Yes. I emailed you out the expense reports. Uh, there were 20 warrants signed electronically since the last meeting. That was for two months because we did not meet in December. So you're signing uh, or had reviewed um, December and then most of January. So the total was $125,798.41. Um, I did make a note in the email that I sent you about two accounts that in the budget report, if you look at them, they're significantly over. One was the heating fuel. Mm -hmm. I had accounts payable look into that today. It's actually an error in the system. She's going to fix that. She had an over encumbrance. Um, I do expect that we are going to be likely slightly over budget. We're definitely going to fully spend budget for heating fuel, um, but we're certainly not going to be 30000 over. And then the trash line, the 1500 that we're currently over budget, that is a true expense, and I actually expect that to grow. We got notified in September by waste management that their rates were increasing. They went from 550 to almost 700 a month, which seems crazy to me. Because of diesel, right? I know, probably. That's what they're t I had Bill call today and double check that, yeah. you know, the bill is accurate and, you know, their costs have increased. So. Mm -hmm that's trickling down to us. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a real expense and I expect that'll go up probably about another thousand dollars before the next year. Otherwise, anything else in the um, expense reports, of course, I'm happy to take questions if you have them, but we have talked about them previously, like transportation um, for one example of being over in that line. Uh, otherwise, we're on track at this point for year end. Great. Any questions about the financial statements? Welcome, Phil. <coughs> See, Phil, you have to walk in without making a sound so the camera doesn't pick you up. Okay. All right. <laughs> You'll never notice you weren't here. All in all, sounds pretty good. Um, principal's report. We got one to look over. Yes. Uh, I wanted to give everyone, it's January, so I wanted to give everyone an update on where we are with the school improvement plan, which sort of drives our work. Um, and um, I just highlighted a few things, some of our stronger focuses this year, creating time and efficient ways for staff to focus on their well-being. We're talking about that all the time. We just started yoga today. It's a um, very um, active school. We're talking about cooking classes. Um, we start our staff meetings with um, responsive class energizers modeling what teachers can bring back to the classrooms as well. A lot of these things are um, activities that teachers can bring back to the classrooms. I'll continue with the second step program for social emotional needs. After the pandemic, we still are feeling the effects of um, students and their social emotional needs. Um, so that's a really important part. Um, data meetings, we're just going through our January data, which is sort of the best data for the principal because we can really see where the kids were where they are right now and we still have several months to get to where we need to be so um we just finished a series of dibbles and kids will be taking Niwa, and so we'll start our data meetings and this is where we also do some reorganization in the school we see that um those kids are struggling and we reorganize staff based on the needs of of the students and um, we can become really flexible with that so um, when that data comes out you know that's what i'm well i'm usually up not, you know today i was up at 2 a.m ready for work at four so you know, but usually when the data comes out it's even earlier than that you know it's like the stock market almost um and then um you know focusing also more we try our hardest but having instructional assistants involved with this specific training out throughout the year especially the responsive classroom on early release days um, we have several A's that cover help cover the students so oh geez um, be me. No. making sure that we're including our um, instructional assistants in the 
training is important and then continuing our work in the anti-racism, diversity and equity um, here at the school, in addition to the district level, which several of our staff members are a part of. Um, class classroom buddies are better than they we've ever been. Don't you agree, Sarah? We're doing so many buddy classes and that that's been really exciting. We happen to have a lot of younger, older siblings. That's a lot of fun when, when they match up and just um, the older kids feel so good about buddying up with the younger students. Of course, the younger students love the older students. So that's going really strong. And our PTO, something, you know, new this year, our PTO is, is really great. Um, it's running and we have planning a lot of different things and they're planning a big spring fling. They want to have it in combination with the 5k that Conway Grammar School does. Um, and, you know, after the 5k, they want to do a spring fling. So they're planning that now. They're in the planning <coughs> stages. We have a grant for um, our arts day that went through the cultural um, committee. Did you get your CGS hat that I sent you? Yes. Oh, good. Good. We have apparel now. <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah, we were, it, yeah. So things are going great. I don't see it on you, Darius. I like the first thing that you said that you start your meetings out with responsive classroom energizers. Yeah. To me, that means handing chocolate out to everybody. So, <laughs> so, so what, what? What is that? You know, it's sort of like um, they're kind of silly, but you know. That's just who I am, right? We're going to do things that we can do with the kids. So it might be that we all stand up and we go, you know, we start with, you do a leg. There's a whole book on responsive classroom energizers and sort of group building. And they may seem silly, but it really, the group building part is really important. So I think one of my favorite ones so far is um, it's right hand, left hand, right leg, left hand. And you go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 zero, you all do it together and 10, nine, eights and all four, and then you go nine, eight, seven, six, five, nine, eight, seven, six, five. And then, so they're just kind of like energized. Okay, let's get ready. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it helps mm -hmm. build community within the set, but it's also, <coughs> you know, I heard Mr. Williams doing it the next day with his PD classes. So that was great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We actually, you know, where, where I work, we're in a bunch of school districts yeah. and we have offered the school districts so many sessions of therapy appointments for teachers that's awesome um that's because fabulous. you know teachers are so stressed out and your classroom only runs as well as your teacher is functioning that's fabulous. so um and some of them are actually taken and then they can get it while they're in school they're yeah. in there you know if they okay that's it right. during their lunch or that's right terrific. after school or it's whatever often there's no time and, right mm -hmm. and they're taking advantage that's of terrific. it yeah that's yeah okay. And it's so hard to find a therapist nowadays anyway. So yeah. to be fast-tracked because yeah. you have a relationship with somebody that That's helps. That's great. Yeah. That's super. So next month I can report on um, where we stand in terms of our data. I think it's funny because the two veins of the school committee existence forever were PTO and lunch lunch fees <laughs> and we fixed them both yes, for the moment yes, so for the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's right for the those were always the yeah, like yeah. right phil yeah. those are yes. the historic yes can never solve the yes. problem so yes. that's pretty awesome yeah you're right <laughs> they're yeah. both solved at the yeah. moment yeah. so that's kids pretty are good. well yep that's great awesome all righty any questions for Kristen? All right. Uh, public comment. We don't have any public. So it's hard to have comment. Nobody's online, right? Um, I keep following <laughs> Kale Farrakar, but everybody's listening. Okay. Can you resume if they want to speak? Okay. <coughs> uh, unfinished business. I don't know of any unfinished business that we have. Look at that. Putting any agenda. We are so tidy and with our business. Taking care of people. It's awesome. So efficient. Yes. And now look what we have to get to our FY24 budget. Yes. Exciting. <clears throat> it actually isn't. <laughs> it's actually not super exciting, but that's, that's good. That's what I like. Yes. Yeah. That's what we left the budget meeting, and Kristen and Darius agreed that a boring budget presentation is better than an exciting one. That's awesome. So, Let's talk about all the fun details. 
Um, <clears throat> so as always, uh, when we build the budget, the first step of the process is uh, consulting with Kristen, other administrators, and Darius and I get together. Uh, we work on building a needs-based student center fiscally responsible budget for the upcoming year. Um, we look at prior expenditures to make sure that we have those budget accounts fully funded as they need to be based on existing expenses. Uh, we consider level services, so replicating existing staffing and programs. That does not mean it's uh, level funded because with level service always comes COLA increases, whether that's for staff or non-salary expenses sometimes even have inflation built into them. Um, and then we look at <clears throat> uh, new initiatives every year as well. So the first thing that I want to remind you of or point out, because uh, you probably wouldn't normally do this math on your own, is that one percentage point for Conway Grammar School is about $21,000. That's important for us to take into consideration as we go through each of those steps that I just talked about, because you can easily do the math and see how quickly those percentage points add up. Um, first step of the process is looking at wage increases. So we look at contractual and non-contractual wage adjustments. Uh, you can see outlined here, I've uh, given you the information on teachers IA, school-based staff, and then central office. Uh, there is a decrease in the central office cost share percentage, which means that anyone that is split uh, five ways for staffing, uh, Darius, myself, facilities director, et cetera, uh, there's a reduction in that due to enrollment. So we're down 0.9%, which is a significant amount. It's almost, you couldn't you know, tell them that we just are making less money this year than we make less <laughs> I don't think they believe me anyway. <laughs> um, so overall, we're looking at a $40,000 increase just to the general fund. Now, keep in mind that doesn't account for all wage increases uh, because all of our IAs are paid from another funding source. So whether that's school choice or a revolving fund, None of our IAs hit the budget. However, our IAs are seeing increases. It's just not directing what we're talking about um, today. Teachers are going to see about a $25,000 increase to the general fund of that $40,000 overall. Um, so right there, you're looking at you're starting your baseline at the 2% increase. And we are in year two of the three-year contract, which did have a 2% COLA. So... <clears throat> um, Teachers not only get that COLA, but they also step. So if anyone is stepping, they're seeing about a 5% increase overall instead of the COLA at 2%. However, Conway does have, of all the elementary schools, the most staff who are at step 14 or step 20. So the majority of the group is only seeing that 2%, which is why the impact is not as significant here as it is in some of our other schools. Uh, the next piece of the process is to look at non-wage increases. So all of our existing general fund expenditures that are not salary related, I go back and look over a multi-year history, consult with those administrators that are in charge of the departments, and make sure that we have the proper funding. Uh, one of the other pieces that we look at here is sick buyback, so that employee separation costs. And we are going to have a retirement payout. Someone retired uh, June 22, so they will get paid out in 24. That is about a $21,000 estimated sick buyback. One, and, one employee? Yes. And then we made adjustments of $9,000 primarily for facilities-related expenditures. So that trash expense we just talked about in the current year that's not budgeted properly, we made an adjustment there. Uh, we're accounting for some inflation for supplies and materials for custodial and building based supplies um, and then try to right side some accounts like testing and inspections that had been overdrawn and then also added an increase to the regular transportation to cover the COLA and the contract as well as the fuel adjustments that we have to pay. So that was a total adjustment of 31000 <clears throat> Uh, from there, I consider other budget drivers, uh, such as special education expenses, and then revolving funds and grants. So we want to make sure that any of our out-of-district placements, which Conway is fortunate not to have any because of the really successful WINGS program that we have here. Um, and then we also look at specialized transportation, which we do pay for um, to transport, whether students um, are in WINGS or not, if their IEP requires specialized transportation, we have to cover that. Um, there's no changes to the general fund based on what we're expecting for next year. 
And then same scenario with revolving funds and grants. All of the revolving funds and grants will be able to carry the existing expenditures that are on budget for this year. So no impact to general fund as well. Uh, sort of a recurring theme here. Last step is to consider new initiatives, uh, increased programming or staffing. Uh, so Kristen, Darius and I had several conversations about this. Kristen has done a really good job over the last several years. If you recall, we added money for supplies and materials last year. We increased the summer programming line uh, two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. So she's been working on these pieces. We added an interventionist, right, mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. year or the year before. Mm -hmm. um, so she feels really strongly that the needs of the school are being met and that for fiscal year 24, there, there are no new asks to consider in the budget. So we're really just looking at that level services like I talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Taking all of that into consideration, we're looking at roughly a $70,000 increase with the first draft being presented to you at a 3.37%, <clears throat> which is really a good spot to be in mm -hmm. in this first, first, starting, yeah. first budget. So uh, the next several pages of the report give you a lot of data. I'm not necessarily going to go through all of that unless you have specific questions. Um, but what I will say is, as in most years or all years in the four years that I've been working on budgets with you all, the driving factor of the increase, which is about $41,000, is um, salaries and wages. That $20,000 is taking up another chunk of it for the sick buyback. <coughs> Uh, and then, again, repeat theme that the majority of the budget, about 78%, is salaries and wages of the total budget year to year. Um, I did give you the uh, historical information. So last year, we went in and were approved at town meeting for 2.96% increase. The prior year was 3.79, and in FY21 was a 0%. That was the year we did um, no increase. And then you'll see uh, enrollment data in that chart there. You are seeing that there is a dip in enrollment. We did get a spike last year. Um, we're coming back down, but it seems to be about the number that we were at pre-COVID in 18 and 19. So while it is a decrease, it, it's probably a pretty typical number. Uh, one of the pieces that we talked about in one of our budget meetings was um, residents versus school choice. Uh, we have a larger sixth grade class of school choice students going out next year, so making sure that we're filling those spots. Um, because if our school choice numbers change pretty dramatically, it changes what budget looks like for us. <clears throat> so the last page of the report, uh, I gave you some additional data and information on the revolving funds. You can see there that school choice is uh, more than one year in arrears. We are spending almost exactly what we're bringing in, assuming that there's no major changes for next year. Early childhood also spending about what we're bringing in for revenue. And uh, same for special education revolving. We're slightly overspending there, but there's enough of a balance in that account. So uh, when I talked about there being no change to general fund because of these funds being in good shape, that's what I'm referring to there. Um, next steps, you know, if there are any, we, we don't have to make any decisions at this meeting. You guys could sit on this number, see how that feels. Uh, Phil, I'm sure we'd be happy to see what the town, um, what position the town might be in. Uh, but we would, you know, possibly for the February meeting be looking for feedback if you want any additional reductions, if you'd like to see that closer to 3%. What does that look like? There's not a lot of room to change here. We certainly could put additional expenses on revolving funds uh, because we do have such positive balances. The one thing that we really might wanna talk about moving is that 21,000 for the sick buyback and not <coughs> inflating the budget with that. Um, at the same time, I feel like we have this conversation every year and maybe we just need a $20,000 budget line to cover that while it's bumping us up over 3% this year. 3.37 is still palatable and you know last year was an anomaly that we had that many teachers retiring one maybe two in a year mm -hmm. you know I'd be surprised if we get two teachers retiring in a year so that 20,000 really should cover us so mm -hmm. it might be a good time to throw that in when we're not asking for anything additional so I know that was a lot of information and I just did a lot of talking so let me know what questions you have did the 
funds for the curtain? Are you just counting on that to be uh, CPA, or was that is that in this budget? <clears throat> that is not in this budget. Um, we we are counting on it going through as CPA funding. If not, then we could you know decide to use school choice if school committee wanted to do that. It's a good use for a one-time expenditure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any projection of future uh, retirements? You have a fairly young staff right now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's okay. quite a few people that have been here around that 20 year mark, some of them a little bit over that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, well, I told them all they had to stay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're <laughs> staying, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're not accepting any. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We don't have any retirement notices. No, no I don't think 30th yeah. yet. Okay. Something could pop up. But, um, if it does pop up between now and the end of the year, that would go on fiscal year 25. And for all the um, COVID gap issues that you're dealing with, with uh, students mm. and and COVID treatment you're dealing with with teachers, there's nothing you see you need to add to the budget or to your needs in the school? Um, well, you know always, right, always right, always right, but you know, working fairly with the town, I think, I do think that we have the staffing to meet the needs of the mm -hmm. students here. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the needs and figuring out the needs with this new um, pandemic, sort of aftermath is the wrong word when you're talking about children, but it, yeah. it's, it's a different <clears throat> outfall. Yeah, fall out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We also have ESSER funds remaining as well, that if there were needs specifically related to what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and there is some flexibility for what those funds could be spent mm -hmm. on. Um, but there's certainly ESSER three money available mm -hmm. if something did come up mm -hmm. that we needed to fund, even if it was for one year, ESSER three and September of 24. Mm -hmm. So it could potentially help, you know, for 24 budget and 25 budget if there were something. Because I'm, I'm thinking more programmatically, you know, more responsive classroom, <clears throat> a teacher retreat kind of thing, like out of school somewhere, you know, that sort of re-energize them mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know um you know any kind of programming like that or assessment or mm -hmm. culture yeah, social I emotional think those are a great idea and in my um big dreams i, I want to have a little kid wings program and an older kid wings program that would be i think there's a need for both so <clears throat> that's you know Oh, I think so too. Yeah. I was. I always thought wings should be expanded. Yeah. Just it's so you know, does so much to keep kids in the district. Yeah, and does. I mean, people. Uh, you know, not that many years ago, I've probably been in every day school, every residential yeah. in the state. You know, and you see these programs, and you're like, we can do better in house. You know, all the programs Frontier had, and the program yeah. you're like so much better to keep yeah. them in that it's yeah. not less than but sometimes right. parents would get the idea like you know oh they can't handle this yeah. there but really we can more yeah. times than not and better being a part of the school right and then they grow up in their community <coughs> which is so much better than that yeah. it's just so many stripes to have them grow up outside of the community and then try to integrate yes. back in yes. and But I will think of um, ideas in terms of, you know, some of the things you talked about, especially with that search. You really should, because it's a great idea. <laughs> and, you know, restoring teachers. I mean, that is, you know, they were. Big fan of, yeah. Just, you know, they, they haven't gotten a break, and now they're dealing with kids who are behind. And it's a lot. It's a yes. lot of demands. Yeah. And, um, Classroom staff, they take it personally when they, right? They, yeah, when, when, you know, they sort of take that to heart, even though I can say, you can <clears> say <throat> well, listen, this child's first grade year, they left, you know, March, second grade, 
we got them back as quickly as we could, and now we're in third grade, and they must be, that's mm -hmm. you can't just catch that up so quickly, right? You know? Might be able to catch up the academics, but not all the things you learn being part of the community. Right. Right? It goes all yeah. the way up. I mean, you have kids entering college that were in remotely learning yeah. for two years, yes. and then they're off. The parents are like, own. "Get out yeah. of here! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go! Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're not ready, go!" You yeah. know, and they, right. they have big gaps. You're right. Yeah. So anyway, just to to prod you to think about yeah, it. Yeah, I think that those are great ideas. How do we come up with this four thousand dollar increase in facilities and things like trash removal materials? It just seems low considering <laughs> the increase of in cost for everything. Is it just is it something that we just saw that's like a just percentage or? guesses? You know, yeah. Phil uh, Hildreth, our facilities director, looks back at anything over the last several years that we've purchased uh, and sort of has a good pulse on the market. And, you know, it, it could still be slightly low, um, but, you know, it feels like we're going to have a little bit more wiggle room than we currently have. And my thing always with the budget is I feel like this town and we invest in the school and, and, if you start not investing in your school, it starts looking that way and feeling that way. And then you also don't get people as attracted with school choice, you know, which is helps our budget a lot. So, you know, once you start, to me, it's always been, yeah, I didn't the, the, the investment comes person. back to you, you know, when you take care of your, mm -hmm. it's basically the gem of the town. Mm -hmm. So it's not me just, I don't try to just go spend money to spend money. It's more, you know, I know administrators are always taught to cut, 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 you know, no, 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 go barely slim. You know, we only need two, two things of paper for the copier. We don't need 10, you know, and it's beat into them, you know, but it's just a whole different mindset to really invest and have, the best you can have. And I, I mean, I think we have that, but I'm a little biased, but it's feel like my grocery bill doubled. So I'm like thinking $4,000 doesn't seem like much of an increase for all of those things. But right. it, it could, could be you know, that, you know, one of the lines was like $200 over for yeah. several years. So, you know, you add yeah, up yeah. all those little things. An analysis. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the one thing I'm going to keep an eye on is the school choice numbers are, if you look in the lower grades compared to what's going out. Um, mm -hmm. Remember pre-K is not, all what's going into K, just the member of the entire pre-K. So right. I believe how many got moving up now with the school choice number? Number 12. Okay. What's that? 12 in kindergarten right now. 12 students. Right. But we will but a lot of them are still out there. Somewhere. There might be some more choice coming in, but that that number of seven that's under pre-K doesn't necessarily mean seven <laughs> coming into K. So it right. could be half that. So now you're looking at K and one next year, both being pretty well, well under which is in fifth grade. Well, you know, what is going it's out in sixth grade is nine. So is just something to But with K, they're see. not all here yet. They're not all in Conway yet. They're still at, you know. Right, we will get some things. We'll like, you know, those are the ones we just, like, you know, you said you had some applications already. Yeah, we, my, I'm just kind of saying yeah. those are the numbers to watch because there's some heavier numbers at the top of that list. Yes, yeah. I mean, my board. kid went yeah. to Montessori until the first grade, you know, which take it or leave it. Clayton didn't, but Claire did. You know? said, um, so there's still some kids out there not in our pre-K or K. Just had three interested in um, school choice today, and I said we, you, you would be voting for that in February. Yeah, we are moving up, we're moving up the timeline on that. To, to yeah, which is work. great because then we can let families know sooner. Those families that plan ahead, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, get the word out there. Is there a difference in the classroom? If there's 12 kids or if there's 20 kids in terms of TAs and or anything like that. I'm just wondering. It just seems like a big difference. You know, 10 kids versus 20 kids. Depends on the age, too. Well, Depends on the age, it's, too. That's yeah. very important. The age is very important. And then also you want more in sixth grade the character of the class of is very important. You can have a class of 20 that runs smoothly and a class of 12 that's, you know, depending on the needs of the classroom. So those are the things yeah. that she was talking, when you were talking about earlier about shifting yeah. needs, that's what you're kind of looking yeah. at at this point. Yeah. Uh, but certainly <clears throat> more bodies is more, you know, there's, you know, yeah. you know, but you also, if you get too small, 
kids out, all of a sudden you got a class of 10, and you know what I mean? It's like, and if there's just not enough dynamics in the class. So yeah, there's a lot of different scenarios in there. I think we split a class once. It was before you. Wait, I mean, sometimes there's like, there's like a sweet spot around, yeah. and I don't know what for what grade, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But like when we're looking at like, it's like 16, 18, that 18 range gives you just enough to be able to do small group works mm -hmm. in different stations, and it's not just you can keep Bobby and Sally away from each other, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, you know that kind of thing, so. <laughs> we split a class, a third grade class once. Do you remember this, Phil? We were on the school committee. Mm -hmm. they, a family moved into town that had triplets. Yes. Um, yeah. And we, there's only one all, three all three could, to go. They, yeah. there's no way they could all be in the same class. And I <laughs> thought that was so, and we kept them all in. It was amazing. Oh, but awesome. sound space, read, yeah. aligned, I was like, but the classes were not that huge, but it was the makeup. The knee. Yeah. Was they they were like both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, the numbers change. I know with my kids here in Conway, it might start off with a lower number, but yes. it increases or vice versa. Yes. Like I think when Jack started, there was like 20 kids, but yeah. then maybe not as many when yes. he graduated. Yeah. But I think it was reverse for Maddie, if I remember. But yes. Yeah, it does change. Thank you. Yeah. And is there any discussion of cap, the cap, what's the capital request going to be? We don't have a capital request. Room. Yeah, we need one. Seriously. Well, I mean, we put it on CPA so that, you know, the yeah, kind of the idea was the like. bathroom stalls. Are we getting an update on the air conditioners? Well, we may need a little bit more funds for the air conditioners. I mean, I guess we could put a press on that. And you're right, the bathroom, bathroom stalls, need, stalls. stalls need to be done. Classroom so is that outside? That's the one that everybody outside? sees when they come to town meeting. They go to the bathroom, like, what's, what's up with these stalls? So, some of the doors. Not yeah. School is so yeah. poor. It's just bad um, message. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and we can put them together. So the capital falls outside the general property yeah. budget. So. Just the reason I say that is because the capital stabilization fund is just like a muscle memory. You just need, you just need to keep it. But have we haven't fully reloaded it. We're really close. We're it's pretty close to full though. I don't remember. No, I thought we were done about halfway. Let's, let's double check that. We can put right. that on the next agenda. I'll put capital on the agenda for next time, and then we can discuss what the bathroom project is and what the, floors need to be done. Classroom floors, Kristen. Sorry. Um. The minutes. Um. We've worked I'm our way around. around. I'm drawing a blank. Help me out. I know Fourth did. still has a rug. Third still has a rug. Third, four. That's it. <clears throat> the capital list shows two more cycles. What about, uh, <clears throat> yeah. That floor should be done. Yep, that was kind of boring too. Sorry. Yeah. Well, just make the rounds. Mm hmm. All right, so we're not voting on this tonight. We're not. There's more discussion. But well, this is actually, I mean, this budget's in good shape. It is. Out, out of the gate. Usually, you know, we're wrestling mm -hmm. with numbers a lot more. So which, that's why I'm saying it's a boring budget. It's, it's a good budget, compared, especially compared to where we are. And how sister schools in the district. How does Frontier look? So the problem with Frontier is that um, we have to run off the governor's, we have to run off the state budget because we're like, we're like a, for those watching, we are picture Frontier as like another town. So we don't right. know all of our revenues come in. We can make some educated guesses. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be public with those guesses because, as Shelly could say, they're just, it's, it's, it's an educated guess. And if you're wrong, everybody's going to be like, mm -hmm. how'd you guess wrong on that? Um, so I'm not wearing that hat. Yeah. So <laughs> the governor's budget actually doesn't come out until the first week in March, where that's the latest date for which she can present it. So we actually have set Although up the, she's very the Frontier. education, correct? Yeah, one one would think. Uh, <laughs> usually, the governor's budget is more conservative, though. The legislature mm -hmm. comes in, it kind of cleans it up from there. But okay. um, just let you know, the frontier budget has to be done by March 11th, and we're getting the numbers on March 1st. Oh, jeez. So we're, we've already set up. We're gonna have we're gonna have a public hearing and then a back to back meeting on the following night. So we're gonna have all these kind of preset meetings. We'll, you know, Shelley will have the numbers ready to go. And we'll know the numbers we're dealing with. So it's yeah. not like that the behind the scene work of putting it together will be there. It's just mm -hmm. you won't be able to do the math until we get 
what the revenues from the state is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then the assessments to the town, what each town is going to get. You know, early early on, it doesn't look like anybody's getting involved individually. I think it's going to be spread around. Okay. It's show he's like, don't give me yeah. this. So the, you're wrong. So the state's deadline is the first, but they could come out soon. Yeah. It could come out sooner, but I don't know. It's normally the last Wednesday in January, but because it's an election hmm. year and she's a whole new, she new administration. Gets fired. New administration That's a lot. Like they so. never in history come out sooner. Like, they play the politics at the end. Mm -hmm. So. All righty. So more discussion to be had on this, and we have one more item about money, which is preschool tuition. Can I, can I just ask one more question? Then? Yeah. So the February school committee meeting is when you want the finance committee here, and if they want to, so our March school committee is going to be our public hearing, right? The first part, the first half hour. Um, so if they want to come prior to that. Yeah, sure. we had talked about possibly inviting them in February for the February meeting. Just so they could see where we're at ahead of that <clears throat> public meeting. Because there's a couple, of new, those couple of new people in that committee Perfect. in Conway, and uh, they're enthusiastic about seeing a school budget that Excellent. they've never we seen like before. Enthusiasm. It will be a greater educational component to your presentation, I'm afraid. At six? Yeah. Yep. And the March meeting is on the 16th at 6. Okay. Good thing it's not the 15th. All right, I'll send Renika a note. To when is February's 16th. meeting? 16th, 16th at, 6. at 6. All right. So we resolved your question. Okay. So now we have preschool tuition fees and aftercare rates. So, um, Aftercare yeah. sounds like old people. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, you know, we have a, our director, Kim McCarthy, is back, our mm -hmm. director of childhood, and she was looking at some numbers and said that we have not done a market correction in many years um, for preschool. And looking at the numbers here, we're recommending that we move to $7 an hour or $42 a day. Um, to adjust the, the market. What are we currently? We are currently six dollars and forty two cents or thirty eight fifty a day. We're asking all four elementary schools. To so you have this. three dollars and fifty cents <clears throat> a day. Oh, they're all the same. Yeah. For impacted families, are there any? What's that? Um. Any funding? Are there any fundings for impacted families that yeah, are rate increases? There's a sliding there's scale, a sliding scale for that. those who need. Okay. And then you remember that um, those who receive um, special education services aren't paying tuition. So and we're seeing uh, <coughs> district wide, I don't know the numbers of Conway, but district wide, we're seeing an increase in special needs. Um, so, okay. Needs of students earlier, I don't know if it's paying that earlier or not. Um, could assume, mm -hmm. and then it's good to get that early admission. Obviously. So, <clears throat> best deal in town here. Still the best deal in town. So that's a vote. That's a vote. Should you decide to do so? Any questions about that? I have a nine twenty-three mark. It is. It's tough when you have little kids. If you live in Natick or need them, it's, you, know, you can afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing is, this it's, is for after school. It, it's hard to come up with like what a comfort level with, and pre-K. It's hard to come up with a comfort level on our budget, the Conway Grammar School budget, without knowing what the frontier component is. The two do have some sort of interrelationship in terms of ultimate affordability questions. Yeah, it's. We can, so, you know, looking at that, you know, we could make an adjustment with those revolving funds on the, you know, we could take that, that teacher, that 20,000, that 1% pretty, pretty easily or take half of it off pretty easily. So um, it's one of those things, you know, it's probably a good discussion to have with the finance committee. Do they like control 
of that $20,000 every single time, or do they want us to take control like we have done with capital stabilization so that we're kind of running our own ship and money? Our own I think it should go on the budget, definitely. What's that? I said it should be a budgeted item. So, I mean, it might we be also a, have time in Conway because your meeting is not until June, so we don't have to have the public hearing at the March meeting. We don't. I just need to know 14 days in advance. So, yeah. I will know we can decide in, at the February meeting if we want to push it off to April. But if we have no one that's eligible to retire, would we still want the budget in there? You could you could build up a fund so when it hits you, it's not. Or if you have, two, you have two or three, or if you have two time. at once. And then you're not searching for the money down the road. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, we're not going. We're not going to have more than two. Just yeah. demographically, we're not going to have more than two for a decade or two. Sure. Mm. Well, you never know. More than two, mm. more than there's two. A in couple, one year. There's a couple that have a lot of years in, even though they're yeah, young. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to guess when people are going to retire. Yeah. You know, you, are you retiring at you yeah. know, early six, late fifties, early sixties, or are you going to mid sixties? You know, I mean, that's a big eighty. Eighty. <laughs> Me too. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Uh, sorry. This, the, sorry, just a clarification. The uh, minutes that are saying preschool tuition rates and yeah, we jumped rates, subjects because we, we needed to vote. Or that was Phil and, and so it's, fault. if there <laughs> were to be pre-K aftercare, it would be the same. same. It's the same. Oh, oh okay. pre-K, not right. not oh, the after school program. Not the after school program. But if right. they were currently, we don't have pre-K. You don't. No. But I do remember when we did offer. And that has to do with numbers. You got to have no, you got to have enough yeah. pay for it. So we still have a vote for like these increases. That's correct. Can I have a motion? So move. A second. Second. All in favor? Seven dollars an hour. Yes. We're going to right. That's correct. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right, we are on to reports. I don't have one. Does the collaborative have one? No, but I did forward on the November executive director report. Um, our last meeting was in November. Mm -hmm. Our next is next week. So in the finance committee meeting this morning, everything's running pretty smoothly. Mm, Nothing too much to report. They're talking a lot right now about their flexible workforce and how to meet their <coughs> space needs and the needs of their employees so that you know, everybody is um, happy and healthy and productive. So they're, they're doing very well. That's awesome. Great. Superintendent, sir, gave us your report. I did. The only thing I just to FYI is that the equity audit is going to be March 20th to the 22nd. And um, that's going to be their site visit. We've already got on their way clicking data for that. And um, you know, school committee members will, I don't know how they're going to do it. I said at the other meetings because there's so many of you. Normally, you know, seven member committee, they're going to invite, they're going to talk to all seven members. I don't know what they're going to do here. So I imagine it might be a sign up and that kind of thing you know, to get somebody from, get some buddies from each committee, I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that information will be coming. So if you want to sign up to be interviewed, I don't know if they're going to be in small groups or doing whatever, but. We'll figure out how that's going to work. But you're one of the group, one of the piece, people they have to talk to. Yeah. The rest you can read, I guess, right? And um, I did not make it to Marty's services, but that was very sad news. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were there. But I'm sure it was well attended. Mm -hmm. Close. Was very sad. But she was a great leader. So. Maybe I'll get a card together to send from the Conway School Committee. All right, I'll do that. I'll just sign her, write her names up. Good idea. Okay. I'm going right. to go with she or the superintendent. Right before Darius. Really? Well, no, there's yeah. a little gap there. <laughs> <It's a> gap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was only super only for three years, but she was the principal of Frontier for 11 years. Principal of only for three years. Should have been the one oh, right before that. Yeah. So, but, yeah, no, she dedicated that. Ready for like this district and love the kids. I've said it all hundred times. I don't need y'all here. Yeah. And <laughs> I go back down that road. How many kids does she have? I know she, she has an army ranger and a navy seal. She had. Uh, she has the, all three of the boys went in the military. Yeah. 
um, I think you don't know Marines. And then, um, so she got four kids and 16 grand, 16 or 12. Oh, there's wow. one there. Um, six, yeah, a ton. Lots. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That had to be sad. Anyway. All righty. And anything else? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved.